Videotape has put the means for audiovisual communication into everyone's possession. All you need is a performer and a recorder. Oh yes, and someplace to shoot. The camera eye dutifully records all that lies within its field. Everything in the picture makes up the total message. It can either enhance and complement the message and maintain an illusion, or it can be out of place, clash, distract, destroy the illusion, or alter the meaning. The videotape producer must control everything that is to appear in the picture. This means not only the talent, his makeup and his costume, but also the background, the setting, and the props which are used. The magic of videotape has to be preceded by a lot of planning, a lot of legwork, a lot of preparation, for which there is no easy substitute. Anything can be in your picture. Anything you can imagine can be created for the camera's eye. The world's your stage, if you can get it ready by 9 a.m. tomorrow. Let's uh, shoot at Charlie's restaurant. I think we should build a set. Look, why don't we just move some pictures around or something? Listen, some seamless paper, a let's, few spotlights. Uh, let's, let's shoot at Charlie's restaurant. Rule number one, use available locations. If you need an office background, use a real office. With today's VTR equipment, it's easy to go on location with our suitcase studio. However, for professional results, we have to watch out for things that may work against us. Let's say we want to explain a simple office procedure. It's all right here, but let's scout our location. This desk is in front of all these other desks where other people will be working during the day, typing, phones, and a lot of background movement. With our portable lighting equipment, we would have a hard time lighting the background area. So for all these reasons, we may decide to move our action back to a desk that's a little secluded. This corner area will add dimension to our picture and make it a lot more interesting. Windows like this can cause us grief with lighting, where we're fighting to balance inside light with daylight, or at night they act like mirrors, so it's best to avoid them. Let's also look at our power availability to service our lights and equipment. We may have to run lines from other areas, or even use a portable generator. When putting up our lights on a location set, we have to be cautious. Quartz lights are very hot and can easily char ceiling tiles, set fire to drapes and flammables, as well as setting off sprinkler systems that will bring unplanned excitement. If we're recording sound on our location set, we may have to cushion our set to take out the sound bounce from a hard room or to soften outside sounds, street noises, walking noises. Stand on the location for five minutes and listen. If the sound is from air conditioning, can it be turned off? How about classroom bells or a page system? All of these normal sounds may be okay, but while scouting the location is the time to find out. If in pre-planning we decide a certain location might be best, our scouting will let us know what technical problems we may encounter. While we're here, we can see that most locations need a little housekeeping. When it's time to videotape, the furniture may look better at a slight angle, and a shoot-by piece in the foreground gives depth. Most desks have too many attractions on them. Our program is the thing. The setting is just that, a place to present our program from. So it's usually best to keep it simple. Other things might be brought from nearby areas to enhance the effect, or special props might be brought in. If you can use an existing location, well and good, but for various reasons, technical and practical, you may decide during planning or scouting that you need a more controlled situation, 
a studio. This may be a real studio, which you have available, or a large, special, quiet room, which you can set up temporarily to be used as a studio. Let's look at some of the simple and abstract things which we can do to create an illusion or a mood when we have full control over the shooting area. Using lights, we can add patterns and shadows to create a background interest, or perhaps to give us a theme. Masonite is a good material to cut these patterns from. A bare bulb gives a sharper image. And remember, not too close to the lamp. We don't want our cutout to burn. We can move in an object to add to the background picture. Or add more in a freestanding piece cut from foam core, upson board, or cardboard. Keep checking the picture on the monitor. Add just enough to set the scene, not to dominate it. No seam paper used in displays can give us a fast background and color change. It's nine feet wide and 36 feet long and will tape up to our walls easily. Silver duct tape is especially good for almost any taping job. This gives us a background. Now we add a couple of chairs and a coffee table for interest as well as a home base to keep things on and we have a simple set. The floor may need a little treatment, like carpet, or maybe just a couple of lines with colored tape to add perspective. Our people complete the picture and should never have to fight for attention with the set. Busy backgrounds, plants growing out of heads, and other pitfalls can be easily avoided by watching the monitor. Make sure we have enough set so we're not overshooting it. You may have to add a small flat, and a color change may help to make it look deliberate. If our talent is to show the viewer anything, make sure he has a place for it, a comfortable location that he can use as home base. It will make him feel at ease and make it easy to light and be picked up by our cameraman. When we're working in an area like this, we can let our ideas run. Platforms will change floor levels. We can add color for mood. We can get as complicated as we want. But don't forget, we're striving for a simple look that won't distract. It's important to plan all set and prop construction to avoid extra work. Artist sketches, layouts, models, and blueprints may help plot the action and simplify the whole job in the long run. Colors and brightness of all objects in the pictures should fall within the range of the TV camera. Remember to allow for the colors of your talent's clothes. No blacks, no whites, no large sparkly objects, no fine patterns which might vibrate. And most important, avoid the same color as the background. Flesh tones look best with shades of blue behind them. Planning is especially important if we decide to construct a hard set. As most surface materials come in four by eight sheets, for economy and handling, it's best to work in that format. We can use plywood, opson board, masonite, foam core, vinyl board. Theatrical scenery flats are usually painted muslin on a framework for ease in moving and storing.
Vacuum form plastic wall sections are also available in a variety of patterns. Unlike the theater, our cameras bring the viewer into the set, and if we want realism, we must build with a dimension. Flats for a hard set are usually framed with 1x2s or 1x3s, with a cross brace and corner blocks. Properly built framing can have the surface material replaced over and over. Flats of this type can be nailed, bolted, or held together with lash lines. Braces and sandbags can keep them from falling over. In placing our flats, a set with a corner is not only interesting, but is also self-standing. Working doors and windows need extra strong construction to prevent the walls from shaking. You probably will also need some kind of background for when the door is opened. Or a view to see through the window. We can create interest in a long wall by adding a jog to simulate the normal turns and coves in real construction. This can also be the start of a drape area. When the drapes are in place, our mind assumes that there's a window behind. Simple framing covered with plastic brick gives us not only the texture, but the warmth of a fireplace. Placement of furniture is dictated by our script so we can avoid awkward crossings. Sometimes you can rent furniture from office supply firms for a small percent of cost. It might save a lot of scrounging around as they'll deliver and pick up. Now that we have our basics in place, it's important to dress our set with props. Pictures should be selected for size, color, and feeling for the type of mood we're trying to create. Watch out for pictures or any props that command too much attention. Plants fill corners nicely, but watch the monitor to make sure they don't grow out of the talent's head. Hanging pieces help create believability, but don't let them upstage the talent. Dress the rest of the set with just enough to make it believable and not overpowering. A set that doesn't work is worse than no set at all. And speaking of working, if you need appliances that work, like a sink or shower with running water, you can rig a temporary setup by connecting to some nearby outlet.
for many situations, for many scripts, a realistic setting is not appropriate. Sometimes no background is desirable. Or a stylized abstract background sets the proper mood. These types of settings are challenges to your imagination to produce something appropriate and striking using inexpensive, readily available materials and as quickly and simply as possible. A fog can be made by blocking off an area and then pouring hot water over dry ice. A wallpaper steamer might be of some help in moving the fog where you want it. Sometimes a set is needed to satisfy special functions of display and demonstration. With a hook and loop board, prepared artwork can be moved around spontaneously. A turntable lets you display objects from all sides. Flip cards help assure that photographs and artwork will appear in the correct order and will be well framed. A reveal board is a visually exciting way to introduce new subjects. Rear screen projection can introduce visuals that help to build your set. Of course, the same effect can be achieved by other means, such as electronic keying or front projection. Sometimes, Special effects are required. We may have to create a snowstorm. With plastic snow, it's easy. Or rain. A plastic drop cloth or child swimming pool comes in handy here. Lightning completes the picture with sound effects. In addition to the normal sets, props and special effects, you may need special props of a wide variety. Scale models. Working models. Oversized demonstrators. Special visual aids. trick props. And special effects materials, like smoke or fog. Sometimes these can be rented from a theater supply or effects company, but more commonly, you'll have to have them specially built. There can be no particular rules for these special props. Whatever will do the job. The planning, building, and use of sets and props can be a real challenge to the imagination and an exercise in ingenuity. We can do a lot with a little, like in this set. Foam core can be made self-standing and can be easily moved. Much of the set is painted, and some of the objects are carved out of styrofoam. Even furniture that is in a darkly lit background area can be profiled from cardboard and painted. As a matter of fact, most of this set is in your imagination. And in your studio, your imagination can create almost anything. With videotape, the world's your stage.
the world of your imagination.